Hi everybody. Join me and I work at Evolix, a seasoning company since 2004. We provide hosting and mostly network and system administration 24 hours a day. Today we manage about 700 Debian servers for several customers. Let's cover configuration file for the Debian developer point of view. The main question is how to have smooth upgrades. So, there are several ways to handle config files. The simplest way is dpkg conf file. From Debian policy, dpkg conf file are best effort configuration. As you know probably, dpkg handles conf file when they are embedded in the package. dpkg keeps track of md5 checksum for all original conf file. You can list them with dpkg-s. If a conf file is modified, even a single character, during upgrade you have to choose to keep the old file or install the new one. Just for the record, I mentioned siblings. You can use siblings for uh, slash etc from slash etc to files in slash usr or slash var directories, but very few packages use this way. More advanced way is using maintenance script. You can generate generate file with postal post inst script during post install of your package, then you can include dynamic value like hostname, for example, with a common hostname, and ask question with well known depconf tool. And why not use UCF? UCF stands for Update Configur Configuration File. It's a tool for preserving user change in config file. It uses three-way merge, then it tracks the original content and can merge if needed. It's even compatible with depconf question. For example, Samba package use UCF and depconf, which is great. Here is the interactive choice with UCF in action. Take a look to the option 6, 3 way of merge. UCF use these three commands. Of course, you, are, you can have conflict during a merge. That's why this option is only available in interactive mode. Sadly, I don't know why, but only about 200 packages use UCF in stretch. If you know why, please, uh, uh, I want feedback. Then, of course, all these techniques are not enough for sysadmin common needs. For example, you want to detect how much memory you have on your server and give 50% of it to MariaDB, for example. You want to add or remove Unix user and uh, then change all user uh, in SSHD config or sudo configuration. You want to add virtual host in your favorite HTTP server every day or sometimes. You want to enable disable a backend in a load balancer configuration. Then, for all that needs, we need config management tools. What's our experience with Ansible? About two years ago, we took a first look to Ansible because we wanted to automate some critical or repetitive tasks. Then, for about a year, we've been porting many of our install or maintenance scripts to Ansible playbooks. And now, for DevConf, we thought it was a good idea to share with you our experience and have your ideas and, and feedback too. Why automate? Automation tools have gained a lot of traction lately. 
they bring homogeneity, reliability, and speed to server management. Because they focus on the state of the server instead of a series of commands. But it's true for all automation platforms, not only on Siebel. So why did we choose on Siebel? And why, what is it first? <laughs> it's a configuration management and deployment automation tool. So why? We settled with Ansible instead of Chef or Puppet, for example, because it's simple, yet still powerful. It is agentless, meaning that there is no Ansible component that stays on the server. It only requires an SSH connection and Python. It doesn't force you to organize anything around its model. It can be added afterwards, used as much or as little as you want and you can remove it if you don't like it anymore. And, very important, it's very well supported on Debian. Yeah, Debian and Ansible are pretty good friends. We have Debian packages seen since Wizzy backwards. On Stretch we have Ansible 2.2 and soon Ansible 2.3 in Unstable. Thanks to Ansible Mantner, Harlan and Lee, who are here. Thanks, guys. So we like, we like Debian a lot, that's why we're here. And we use it a lot for the majority of our servers, and we build on top of it. It's no surprise, but we install a lot of packages. We create users for our, admin, for our team members. We apply security policies or performance tunings. And, most importantly, we customize a lot of services for our need with good practices, what we consider very good practices in our context. We have written more than 50 roles for Ansible. A role is, uh, is a kind of package. They are all publicly available on our Git repository. And with them, we can install our, all our servers and, and have a very good common ground, very good, very good defaults for us, but also many, uh, many options for configuration. We also have an ambitious goal. It's to be able to install all our new servers 100% with Ansible, but then for the management, we can go either way, continue to maintain the server only with Ansible, or have a, a hybrid approach with manual interventions and Ansible-driven operations. That gives us many um, quite difficult constraints and we have to be extra careful in the way we manage our configuration to not to introduce uh, bugs or misconfiguration. Some, some services can include files within config files. That's what we call includes. There are many variations on the implementation, but the idea is that you can extract fragments of configuration, put them to, into external files, and then include them back in your main config. And you can push the ID, the ID a little bit further with automatic inclusion of all files in, from a specific path, like a conf.d directory, for example. And that's what will help keep original files pristine. Apache, as you can see, and you probably know, is using this technique very extensively for modules, virtual hosts, and also other configuration sections. And with packages that use this approach, like MyADB, in a much simpler way, we have a pattern for customizing the configuration without touching the original files. We are adding two new files. The first one is called evolix-defaults and it contains all our default settings. By default, we mean what we think is the best for our, the vast majority of our servers. And this file will always be created or overwritten by Ansible. That's why we, can, we are able to change the defaults later with no fear that we will mess with the, the over, overrides after that. The second file is, um, is evolix-defaults. 
And at the beginning, it's just a placeholder. It contains only comments or explanations uh, for how to use them. And, and this file is never reset by Ansible, so we can safely add to it manually or via Ansible line by line. The naming is very important for this, uh, for this uh, pattern because it enforces the load order and precedence and it clarifies the responsibility of each file. And we try to apply this, um, we try to apply this pattern whenever we can, but it's not always completely possible. Then for Debian package, we have packages that does the job very well. Uh, they encouraging the use of overrides and includes. I will give you some example. Fail to ban is explicitly discouraging uh, the modification of uh, j.conf infra or local file. MAVIS uses confd directory populated with default file and uh, you need to use override in a new file. Dovecot use uh, directory, confd directory also and use UCF which is great. CCTL use uh, uh, cctl.g directory so you don't need to edit slash etc slash cctl.com file anymore. But we have also some package with lack of support of override and include. I will give you some examples. sudo use sudo.g directory but you can't override alias for example and the worst sudo will be completely broken if you do it. Nagios and RPE use confd directory but doesn't support uh, option override and even read file randomly in confd directory. So surprising. Postfix doesn't support include and upstream doesn't want to support it. OpenSSH doesn't support include also and the order of option in SSHD uh, uh, config is important, so it could be it can be very dangerous. Nginx doesn't support override. Squid supports includes an override, but Debian package use only one single file. So Jeremy, let's play with uh, addition of conf file with all that stuff. I will hurry a bit because uh, I think we're late. But Ansible gives us many, many options to, to edit files. I will cover them briefly. We have lining file, which, can, which is perfect to add or change or remove a, a line in a file. It can, but it's not very good for multiple lines editions. We have also replace, which is essentia essentially uh, the set command. It doesn't replace the whole line, but only what matches the regular expressions. Lining file and reject and replace and other modules use regular expressions and as you may know, regular expressions are quite hard. Uh, for example, try to remove the exec function of the disabled PHP function, but not the shell exec. Maybe you, you will have fun. And if you can get away with replacing the whole file instead of poking into it, it's really easier. We also have blocking file which is very useful to insert and update chunks of text within predefined markers. This one is very useful for multiple line editions, but it's quite dangerous to use it in conjunction with line in files or replace for the same lines. Copy and template, they both replace the whole file, either statically or with a template. And with template you can use variables and conditionals to build, uh, to build the final file, final file, but we advise not to put too much logic in your template because the, the, maintenance, the maintenance is uh, harder. So to sum up, stay at the file level if you can. We do that when we are not sure about the file content. And if you need, get down to the line by line level in the file and using those, uh, those modules carefully with a lot of testing. <coughs> so, 
we need to have smart config file for automation and let's summarize all good practice support override in config file use include when possible to have untouched default config files use conf directory when possible use conf generated by maintainer script and take a look at UCF provide script to validate the config like Apache CTL config test for example and provide tools to enable disable config file or module like uh, Apache for example so, Thank you, I'm not sure we have time for questions maybe yeah we have a few minutes if you have, if you have questions And if you don't have questions now, it's okay, we, we will be here until the end of the week. Uh, I've heard uh, Harlan and me are organizing above. I don't know if it's, uh, it's done or not. No, not yet. But we can talk in the, in the hallway above uh, about, about Ansible, for sure. Thank you again. Thanks. <laughs>